I'm not used to this much excitement. <laughs> Y'all have told me all pieces here. Isn't it good? To, isn't it just good to be saved? Yeah. Isn't it good to enjoy Jesus? Yeah. Just being happy in Christ. Whew. I don't hear singing like that very often. And uh, boy, that is good. What a blessing. Woo wee. Are you all enjoying this much as I am? Some of you need to notify your face, all right? <laughs> Woo! It's good, I'll tell you. I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, so, uh, have you pushed the button back there yet? Okay, I'm on it. Okay, you got my tears and everything, so uh, that's all right. Well, we want to take up now and go to a very important part of leading someone to Jesus. And that's the part of assurance of their salvation. Now, a lot of people do not have assurance of salvation. And uh, I was witnessing to a lady uh, this week, and, and she had no assurance at all that she was going to heaven. She'd been in church all of her life. And uh, it was such a joy to be able to share these verses that we'll be sharing with you now. And in 1 John chapter 5, uh, verse 11, and this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Think about that. This is the record. In soul winning, you want to dwell on record. Whose record? God's record. Amen? God said it. He that hath a son has what? What kind of life? Eternal life. I'll use the always do this. I'll camp right there for a little bit. And I'll, and I'll ask him, this is God's record. Do you agree? Yes. What kind of life does God give? Eternal life. To who? To those who believe. Those who have received Christ. Isn't that a precious verse? Don't you thank God for that? Yes, 1 John 5, 11. And God says that you may know that you have eternal life. And you know, I would, uh, I, I would hope everyone right here in this soul winning class would know. I want you to know. God wants you to know that you have eternal life. Christ is in your heart. You don't have to worry. Satan will... Try to come around. That's when old Satan comes around. And that's the reason in this little Bible I wrote in 1960, February 1960, when I was born again to the family of God. And every time old devil tries to come around and say, Hey, did you really get saved? I said, Ha ha, wrote it down right there. And look what God said right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the authority of the Word of God. So, be sure, drive that home hard. And uh, that's very important. Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, whoo, I will come in. I will come in. Aren't you glad for that? Whew. He's here this morning, amen? <laughs> he is here. And you know how wonderful it is when you've got the presence of God living here. You know what? You're not the same. Thank the Lord. I, you know, I can't sing, but you ought to hear me trying in the shower. <laughs> Man, you know, there's some things that, that only the Spirit of God, it changes us. And this is what that he said. I want you to know some things, my child. I want you to know this. And then he says in Ephesians 2.8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Watch it. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's the reason I love to ask people, tell me about when you got saved. And if they started putting works in there, I, whoa, wait a minute, let's go ahead and see what God said. Now one of you are wrong. Either you're wrong or God's wrong. Who do you think's wrong? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. And uh, so that is very important. All oh, by grace. What is grace? God giving us what we do not deserve. God's unmerited favor. God's given it. Aren't you glad for grace? Yeah. Isn't it amazing what he'll do? He'll take like an old ex-drunk, take him, save him, 
clean them up, put them in the ministry. Oh, Billy Powell. Raise your hand there, Bill. Billy Powell. Rides motorcycles. Got a, got a big motorcycle gang, and uh, he's leading them to Christ left and right there in church. Don't forget my revival next week. Looking for you that. Okay. And, uh, but uh, amazing. How many churches have you started now? Two right now. Two right now. Praise God. He told me the first time I saw him today. He said, hey, just led somebody to Jesus. Thursday had two saved. And uh, more Sunday, I think. But just that's what it's all about. Sharing the good news. People need Jesus. Amen? And then Jesus says in uh, Ephesians 4.30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Now, I'm going I'm, I'm to tell you something right now you'll never forget. I, uh, somebody showed me this, and I've never forgot it in that verse of Scripture. You are sealed. My mother used to do a lot of canning. My wife goes to Kroger, but my mama used to can stuff. <laughs> and after she put those beans or whatever in a jar, and they were ready. She'd call Daddy. Come here and tighten that lid. Tight. And Daddy would come with a great big old hand, and he'd put that on that, and he'd tighten that old jar. And you know what? It was safe inside. You never had to worry. It was sealed. Sealed. No way I was going to get in there. It was sealed. You know what God said? We are sealed until the day what? Comes back and calls us home. Yeah. Woo! Glory! Yeah. Y'all are finally getting with it. Amen. <laughs> All right. And then he said, John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give unto them. What kind of life? Eternal, Eternal life. They shall never what? Perish. Not going to perish. No. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I'm just glad for that. No man's going to pluck you out of God's hand. I like it. It's a double hand. Jesus has got you. And then the Father's got his hand around that. Man, we're safe. Amen? Oh, what a, what a Savior that we have. And then he says, I give unto them eternal life. They'll never, never perish. Oh, what a blessing God is. I want us now to go to the, the soul's manifest, manifestation and uh, on how, really, what happens after sal salvation? After they have received Christ, what happens next? Do we just leave them out there? Watch this. Don't forget this. When a baby is born into the world, you would not think about just leaving that baby outside and say, you take care of yourself. You don't do that. But it's the same thing when a soul is saved. They're babies. They have to be fed. They have to be taught. Someone had to teach you. Someone had to lead you. Someone had to take you and put them under their wing and teach you. And this is what we as soul winners need to do. Once that they have received Christ, then the work just begins. We need to direct them to follow Christ in baptism. Why is that so important? Watch this. Because I would almost guarantee there are people in this congregation this morning, you're saved, but you've never been scripturally baptized. More than likely. You see, people will tell you, many if you let them, after I say, well, preacher, I was born, I was baptized when I was seven years old. No, you just dipped. You just got wet. You haven't been baptized. You're baptized. Why? After you're saved. Why? It's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are identifying ourselves with Him. We belong to Him. We are burning the bridges behind us, and we are saying to a world out there, I am a Christian. I've been saved. Our life has changed. We walk different. We talk different. We are different. Man, I love them. Amen. We, by 3 o'clock, we're going to have a whole lot of amen. I better move on. All right. Number two, seek to follow that one 
and pathway of fellowship. The first thing the Lord asks us to do is to follow us in believer's baptism. You'll see it up here. Picture of faith. That's what it is. We're identifying ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 4, we're buried with him by baptism, raised to walk, what? In newness of life. I remember when uh, my wife and I were baptized together, and what a special, special time that that was. She's raised in a Christian home. Uh, her daddy was a lay preacher. Two other sisters married preachers. And, uh, and, 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 you know, she went to church all of her life. But she needed it to be saved. Yeah. And uh, after she got saved, and uh, she got saved a little bit before I did, and I was saved in 1960, then both of us followed the Lord in believers' baptism together. Yeah. So special. So special. Then the next thing we did, went home and dedicated our home to the Lord Jesus. We invited him to come in. <laughs> want you to come into our home. Want you to live in our home. Want you to be a part of that home. Lord, be a part of it. See, it's so important that we do that. All right, uh, the soul winner's mandate. Let's look at that. The first, our task. Our task is to follow him and to do as he bids. Look what he said. I love Matthew 4, 19. Take this home with you. Let it get down in your heart. Follow me, and I will teach you to become so. so. Mm -mm, doesn't say that, does hmm? Help you? No, it doesn't say that. You know what he said? I will make you. <laughs> I've, never, I've never, never saved anybody, and you had neither. But we become fishes of men, fishes of men. And that's what he is saying. Isn't that all? Where is it? He would have lost it. But that picture up there of Jesus in, uh, in all the many boat and all of those, those, thank you, Ken. Ken is a miracle man, isn't he? And, but, but you just look. Look at that. Jesus said, whew, cast on the right side. You'll find. Look at the fish in there. And you know what? The souls are there just like that. They're waiting for us to come and tell them about Jesus. Oh, if we could just get, get to heart the souls that Jesus has, what a difference it would be. He said, if you just follow me, I'll make you. I'll make you a soul. I don't believe you'd be here today if you didn't want to be a soul. God's going to use you. God's going to use you. And then we see, tell, go tell, Matthew, Mark 16, 15, and he said unto him, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I had no earthly idea. When I prayed a prayer a number of years ago and said, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I had no earthly idea of all of the countries God would send me. To him be glory. I have never been in a foreign country that somebody didn't get saved. The gospel works. The gospel works. I never, ever, ever dreamed I would preach to one million people at one time. Never dreamed that. Follow me. I'll make you preachers. I'll make you fishers of men. And then he says, testify. Testify of what Christ has done for us. No one can argue with your testimony. Hey, Amen. I can argue with your testimony. This is what Jesus has done for me. Let me tell you about it. Oh, I love to hear testimonies. And then travel, like I just said. He'll send you to and fro. I have no earthly idea where you're going to wind up when Jesus is directing your life. You know, give me 30 seconds. I'm going to do a little preaching, all right? But you know the most exciting thing when we give our life to Christ and we see him planning and leading every morning. I just say, Lord, this is your day. You plan for me. Put me where I'm supposed to be. Put in my mouth what I'm supposed to say. Plan my life, Lord, all of it. And just let me follow you. Mm. What a great God he is. Amen. And he does it. He does it. And then let's look at soul winner's misgivings. This is four fears that we have. This is some things we have to 
watch out for. The fear of resentment. The fear of rejection. You know, that should be way down the road somewhere. Now, I'm going to surprise all of you. Everybody doesn't like me. <laughs> and everybody doesn't like you. There are people that you will see that will not accept you and not, and you know why? They're really not mad at you, they're mad at Jesus. We are living in a day now that the world doesn't want to hear the name Jesus. Amen? And he's, he's the heart of the gospel. It's him. He is the gospel. And just tell people about Jesus. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but look at uh, ways to encourage people to like you. That, number one, is probably one of the best. Become genuinely interested in that person. That's so important. Let that people, person know you're interested in them. You know, you'll win a whole lot more people with, uh, with honey than you will vinegar. I know that you do. Be a good listener and learn to talk freely at first. Listen to people. People want somebody to listen. I've never yet led anybody to Jesus. They, didn't, they want to tell you all about their troubles. They won't tell you if you listen to them long enough how miserable that they are. I was in a grocery store uh, yesterday picking up a couple items, and, and, and I, I said, I'm going to run in, I'm going to run out. And I saw this, this lady and her son. And for 45 minutes, they told me every problem that they had. But they needed someone to talk to, someone to pray with them. Both testify to be saved, uh, but they needed someone to share. Be a good listener. And then, ten, ten don'ts to heed if you want to win a son. This is so important. Don't argue. Don't ever argue. You'll never win anyone by arguing. And they may tell you, well, I, I don't like Baptists. You know, I know some Baptists I don't like either. <laughs> they have a different denomination. Hey, God's going to take care of all of this stuff when the rapture occurs. Amen? He's going to take care of every bit of it. What we need to do is focus on Jesus Christ. What we need to do is lift Christ up. He will draw men to him. And then the fear of, of uh, raising the conversation. You know, so many times we, we wonder about how can I get to talking to him about the Lord? Do you ever have trouble with that? Man, you can talk about the weather. You can talk about tornadoes. You can talk about rainfall. You can talk about gas prices. We're not going to change any of that. One of the best questions after, after being friend, uh, friendly and folksy is this. You ask them, do you know you got a home in heaven? Are you sure you're going to heaven? That question right there gets people really thinking. And then, uh, I'm, I'm about finished, but let me, let me just say this. It's so, so important if we go back, and you don't have to turn back again, but if we go back to those clips on, on, uh, on Daniel and uh, Alan uh, leading Moose here to the Lord, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you go back to that, they did not push it. They did one thing. They presented the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit bring the conviction. Amen? And that is so, so, so important. Uh, let me just give you this very quickly, and then I've got some real good news I want to share with you. But there are times, as a soul winner, you are not going to be able to go through all of this plan of salvation. Okay? It was kind of like where we were last night at the restaurant. This lady just, her waitress running. I had to give her a track 
and maybe a verse or two of Scripture. There are going to be times that you're not going to be able to, to give them and go through the whole plan of salvation. I had the privilege of leading uh, the lady to the Lord at McDonald's and to drive in. And, uh, and, and she was ready. The Holy Spirit had already prepared her heart. And, uh, but I had to give her just three or four verses and lead her in prayer there. Number one, look at the Roman road, if you would. In Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. Make sure, don't ever leave that out. The judgment of sin, the wages of sin is death. Don't ever leave that out. Christ died for us. Don't ever, ever, ever shortchange that. Romans 5, 8. And then we accept Christ by faith. Romans 10, 10, 9. And there are going to be times that you're going to just get a, a quick shot at them. Give them that if you don't have time. I, I'll never forget, I was uh, in Durham Airport. And I was, uh, I was leaving the airport and in my car and I, I uh, pulled up to pay my parking ticket where I left my car there. And uh, the lady, I said, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, are you a Christian? She said, oh, no, 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 I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. <laughs> Boy, somebody did a good job in soul winning her, didn't they? <laughs> but you know, give them the gospel. It's Christ. It's not the Baptist church. Not any church. It's Jesus Christ that does the saving and the, and the keeping. Or, before we dismiss, I want to take just a moment and I want to tell you a little bit on else what the Lord has laid on my heart. And I have a hope by now has laid it on your heart. This book here is more complete than any soul winning book I have ever, ever met. What's in this book is what you have seen, or not seen, but have heard what I have taught. And uh, it's a lot in the book that I didn't cover. Excuses. But I want to save a little bit of time that, uh, for questions maybe that you may have before lunch. But I want to encourage every one of you to have the book and also the video. Now, think of this. God gave me this early this morning. I hadn't even thought about this. Think about it. If you've got this book and this video, you can show this if you've got a computer <laughs> and can you can show this in your home. What better way of inviting neighbors, family, friends to come into your home and say, I want you to see this movie that I've got. I mean,